Today we will recap the story of the 2016 movie Westworld. At the beginning of the first episode, we see a girl named Dolores sitting on a chair in the lab. A male voice speaks to her. He asks if she ever doubted her reality. Dolores answers that she doesn't and immediately wakes up in her bed. She gets dressed and goes out on the porch of a house in the Wild West. Dolores says hello to her father named Peter Abernathy and goes about her business. At the same time, a train rides across the prairie, and the passengers marvel at the surrounding beauty. Soon they arrive in a typical Wild West town. It has everything guests would expect to see, horses, dust, boys on the street, outlaw ads, and a sheriff. A man named Teddy enters the bar and orders a whiskey. A promiscuous girl approaches him, but the guy refuses her services and suddenly sees Dolores outside the window. Teddy approaches her. It is clear from the conversation that she was waiting for his return, because he had promised it. But Dolores' father won't be happy about it. The couple goes on a horseback ride across the prairie. In the evening, the young people drive up to Dolores' house. Here they see the bandits, who massacre the girl's family. Teddy opens fire on the criminals. A man in black approaches the sobbing Dolores. He feels different than the other people. The man in black has experienced this scene many times and knows exactly what will happen next. Teddy starts shooting at the man, but the bullets don't hurt him. The strange man says that Teddy can never overpower him, because the guy is only made to entertain visitors. Teddy fails, and the man in black drags the screaming Dolores into the barn. The man likes her resistance, he says that's what he's paying for. The man in black shoots Teddy, who rushes to her aid. He falls to the ground, and this is when Dolores wakes up in her bed again. She remembers nothing of recent events. Alive and unharmed, Teddy wakes up on the train. He doesn't remember anything either and is coming into the town again. The scenery zooms out, and it becomes apparent that Wild West World is a mock-up. It is located in a laboratory where androids, or hosts, indistinguishable from humans are created. Here they also create android animals and train them. Real people for a tidy sum can get into West World and find entertainment to their liking. In this world populated by androids they are allowed any liberties. Two scientists, Bernard and Elsie, observe an android girl. The scientists understand that the android has new gestures and memory that should not be there. This means that the head of the project, Ford, has again introduced something new to the program. He calls it daydreaming. Hosts usually have their memories erased each night so that they don't suspect that Westworld is not real. But, thanks to the innovations related to tactile memory, the android's inner world is enriched, and guests like it a lot. However, such a change could jeopardize the entire project. Westworld's part quality assurance manager, Teresa Cullen, summons Bernard to her office. She reports that there is unplanned android activity in the refrigerator storage. Hosts that are already out of service are stored there. Teresa orders a rapid response team to be dispatched to the refrigerator storage room. Bernard thinks that the androids in the refrigerator can't be dangerous, so he goes there. 2. The armed team descends into a large hall filled with motionless androids. In an enclosed part of the hall, Superintendent Ford and one of the first-generation hosts sit at a chessboard. They drink and chat, reminiscing about the old days. Seeing Bernard, Ford tells him that the first androids often broke down, and sends the old android to sleep. He obediently obeys. After realizing the work Ford has done from the invention of the first androids to recent innovations, Bernard admires the genius of his boss. We go back to Dolores' house again. The girl is chatting with her father, before going to town, according to her standard protocols. Peter asks his daughter to return home before nightfall, as a criminal is hiding in the mountains. The girl promises to do it. Teddy gets off the train again at the station in town. At the entrance to the saloon the sheriff is standing, and as usual, invites guests to go to the mountains and catch the criminal. A couple of guests agree to go with him. Teddy walks past the people talking and heads into the saloon. He repeats his standard conversation with the promiscuous girl. Teddy then sees Dolores through the window again and wants to approach her, but he is overtaken by the man in black. He talks to the girl, who has absolutely no memory of him and therefore remains calm. The man in black compliments her and tells her that he won't be stopping by today. The girl is puzzled. The man in black walks into the saloon and sits down to play poker. The sheriff's squad rides across the prairie, along with the real amusement par visitors. The sheriff notices that the criminal they seek has clearly been here. At that moment, a fly lands on the sheriff's cheek. He begins to stutter and begins to look like a broken doll. The guests are frightened, abandon the sheriff, and turn the horses around. In the next shot, we see the broken sheriff android in the lab. The creative director of the park, sees Moore and Teresa demand an explanation from Bernard whether the breakdown could have happened because of the upgrades. Bernard doesn't rule it out and reports that 200 hosts have already been updated. Teresa demands that the updates be cancelled. Sizemore is outraged, because if you withdraw 200 characters at once, the storyline will be irreparably changed. Teresa doesn't care, for her the most important thing is safety. Bernard believes that Teresa exaggerates the magnitude of the problem. He flirts with the woman to appease her. 
Bernard is confident that the android sheriff is not dangerous to the guests. Teresa believes him and softens. In the saloon, the guests have fun with the girls. Afterwards, they plan to take Teddy for a walk in the canyon. The guests discuss aloud that they wouldn't mind using Teddy as a shooting target. He is sitting on the porch and hears these words, but doesn't react to them in any way. A fly crawls down Teddy's cheek, but he doesn't notice it. Dolores is painting a picture in a secluded spot by the river. There are horses grazing nearby. A married couple with a young son approach the girl. Dolores friendly invites the boy to come closer to the horses. The child quietly asks the girl if she is real. Dolores doesn't understand what the boy is talking about, and begins to pack to go home. Meanwhile, Peter Abernathy notices something strange underfoot on his ranch. He bends over and picks up a photo of a woman in the real world, without a clue how it got into Westworld. Soon, Peter shows the photo to his returning daughter. He is very surprised, because he has never seen the place pictured. Dolores says it doesn't look like anything and goes into the house to help her mother with dinner. Peter, as if mesmerized, continues to stare at the photo. In the real world, Sizemore finds Teresa and wants to have a serious private conversation with her. He reports that there should have been no updates at all. Ford and Bernard are making the androids more and more lifelike, although according to the story script this is not necessary. Sizemore believes it is time to remove Ford from the company. Teresa shares his ideas, but doesn't voice her opinion all the way, thinking Sizemore is stupid. Bernard manages to fix the sheriff. At this point, an alarmed Elsie reports that one of the androids in the park is behaving inappropriately, scaring guests. The team immediately goes to the park and subdues the feral host. Teresa once again voices her displeasure with the updates. She believes that androids should not improvise. The woman demands that all innovations be removed. Ford will not be happy with this news, so it is up to Bernard to tell his boss. He finds Ford overseeing the creation of a new android and reports on the mistakes made. Ford says that man is also a big mistake. Humans broke the laws of evolution, they began to save the weak, to heal the hopeless. This means that people are all done, they will not be able to develop further. Meanwhile, the man in black brings the dealer of the local casino to the desert and interrogates him about where the secret levels of the park are located. After refusing to answer, the man in black conducts some special manipulation on the dealer and receives a card, which depicts a labyrinth. In the morning, as usual, Dolores comes out on the porch and greets her father, but Peter is still looking at the picture. He begins to speak in riddles. Suddenly, Peter quite deliberately tells the girl that she must leave, for hell is empty, and the devils are all here. He whispers something in her ear. The girl immediately goes to see the doctor in town and meets Teddy. Dolores asks him to go with her because Peter is very sick. The couple goes silent at the sight of a group of riders with scarves over their faces. This is the gang of the elusive Hector, the very bandit the sheriff was looking for. Everything happening in the laboratory is closely watched by employees of the corporation. This is a new plot developed by Sizemore. The criminal gets rid of the sheriff and enters the saloon, clutching the end of a rope in his hands. The other end of it is tied to his horse. Teddy and Dolores hide from the shots being fired, but the girl wants to get back to her father, so they leave their shelter. Teddy gets hurt. Dolores sobs beside him, and Teddy starts repeating his standard lines. The bandits on the second floor of the saloon tie a rope around the safe and throw it over the railing. Upon hearing the whistle, Hector's horse rushes off, dragging the safe behind him. Hector tears the announcement of his capture off the wall. He starts making a speech, but one of the guests shoots Hector and his accomplice. Seeing that, the guest and his wife feel indescribable delight and want to be photographed with the bandits. After the firefight, the staff decides to take away the broken androids in order to cancel their upgrades. Dolores leaves Teddy in despair. Suddenly, Elsie comes up to the girl and shuts her down with a phrase. Then Elsie summons the staff to pick up Teddy and Dolores. The hosts are carried out on gurneys. Bernard informs Teresa that most of the androids are perfectly fine, except for Peter Abernathy. Security Chief Stubbs turns Dolores on. The girl is scared, she is not acting like herself. Stubbs asks her about her father and the photograph. Dolores explains that her father was just scared. Teresa says that Peter should be turned off, because he has learned more than he should have as an android. But Ford thinks it's better to find out how he did it first. At this time, the Abernathy Ranch is being investigated, with people walking around with flashlights and in uniforms. They hide the found photo in a plastic bag. Bernard reports that he ran a full diagnostic on Peter Abernathy, but never determined why the failure occurred. Dr. Ford asks Peter to download the past configuration settings. Peter comes to his senses and begins to talk about his daily activities at the ranch. He remembers his daughter Dolores fondly. She is the most important thing to him, and he must protect her. Peter starts getting confused again, repeating, my daughter has to get out, she has to be warned. It seems to Bernard that this is no longer just a glitch, but an independent behavior. Peter says he wants to meet the creator, he intends to exact violent revenge. He grabs Dr. Ford by the shoulders. Security shuts him down, and Teresa demands an explanation. Bernard says they didn't program this behavior, and only Dr. Ford probably knows the truth. Once upon a time, this host played the role of a professor from a horror story. 
He led a group of occultists and liked to quote Shakespeare. Bernard suggests that it was the daydreaming that opened access to fragments of previous memories. The doctor tries to calm the team down. In the next section, Stubbs continues talking to Dolores. The girl admits that her father whispered a Shakespeare's phrase in her ear, raging feelings have a violent end. In the following shots, Dolores wakes up in her bed, starting her usual cycle. She says hello to her father, who is already played by another host. But Dolores doesn't notice it, because her memory has been refreshed. Teddy wakes up on the train, beginning his new cycle. The man in black looks at the map of the labyrinth, then mounts a horse and sets off into the desert. Dolores looks around and smiles. A fly landed on her neck. Dolores slaps the fly with her hand. This is where the first episode ends. At the beginning of the second episode, two men, real people, arrive at a modern train station, where they are greeted by androids in white robes. William is engaged to Logan's sister and works with him in the same company. Logan brought a friend to have fun, because anything is possible in the world of the Wild West. One of the android girls named Angelica leads William into a room where models of Western-style clothing and all sorts of weapons are collected. A girl gives a guy some signs of attention. William wonders if she is real. Angelica replies, if you can't tell the difference, does it really matter? Elsie tries to find out what happened to Peter Abernathy after all. She has reviewed his programming many times and has noticed that Peter acts on his own, as if deliberately. Elsie assumes that Ford's additions to the updates were the cause, and asks permission to check on Dolores again. She suggests that this might be contagious, but Bernard says the girl has been checked and cleaned up. The next morning, Dolores crosses the street as usual, but this time she suddenly stops halfway through. The girl hears a voice in her head telling her to remember something. Dolores turns around and sees the street littered with rubble. She is the only one alive here. Suddenly there is a coughing sound behind her back. Turning around, Dolores sees Maeve, the owner of the brothel. Dolores leans into her ear and utters the phrase that Peter said, raging feelings have a violent end. Maeve looks confused, and Dolores walks away. William, disguised in period clothing, enters through an old-fashioned wooden door into a train carriage bound for a town in the Wild West. Logan shows up next. He looks out the window, admiring the canyon. At this time in town, a small posse is about to perform an act of justice on the criminal Lawrence. Then the man in black appears. He shoots everyone but Lawrence. It finally becomes clear that the man in black is real, because no one has been able to hurt him. He shows the rescued man a drawing of a labyrinth and demands his help in finding the exit, behind which is a secret level of the game. The man in black then ties Lawrence to his horse and drags him after him. In the saloon, Maeve gives her standard welcome speech to the new guests. Suddenly, memories of an Indian attack are awakening in her mind. She is dressed as a farmer and has a daughter. Maeve falls into a stupor and finds herself in the control center. She behaves as usual. The scientists do not understand what is wrong with her. Dr. Ford and Bernard observe the production and discuss the problems that have arisen. Bernard believes that a single picture is not enough to influence Peter. Clearly there was something else, perhaps a sabotage? Has anyone else joined their games? In the meantime, a train arrives at the park, from which Logan and William get off. They walk through town, see a Federation soldier recruiting volunteers for the army, cowboys, and ladies in period dresses. William is delighted, he couldn't even have guessed how believable it would be. Then William sees Dolores. She comes out of the shop and packs her travel bags. When she sees her reflection in the glass, she freezes for some reason. A voice is heard, inviting her to turn on. In the next shot, we see Dolores already in the center with Bernard. He wonders if she remembers their last conversation. The girl says yes and states that she has never told anyone about him. Bernard and Dolores obviously have some kind of secret. The man sees something unusual in her that he personally finds amazing, yet others may think otherwise. Bernard tells Dolores to turn off the event log and confirm that she erased this conversation. The girl confirms and heads back to the park. Maeve returns to the saloon and once again gives her standard speech to her next guest. Suddenly, she sees a memory related to the Indians again. Maeve looks at her hand and remembers how the girl's hand was holding onto it. Sitting next to her, Teddy asks if she's okay. The technician watching Maeve reports to Stubbs that her behavior is unstable again. Stubbs orders the role of Maeve to be assigned to another android, Clementine. Maeve clearly looks distraught over the memories. Stubbs orders her to stay for one more night, then call her off in the morning. William and Logan sit at a table in the hotel restaurant. William is still not used to the hosts and asks how they can be distinguished from real people. Instead of answering, Logan pulls out a gun, but William asks to let him finish his dinner. Then Logan has fun with the women, and William talks to Clementine. He says his real love is waiting for him at home. Clementine reflects on the word real and makes an understanding nod. At this time, Ford gets into an elevator in an underground tunnel, and he finds himself in the desert in an isolated part of the park, where he meets a boy about 10 years old. They go for a walk together. From the outside, it looks like they've known each other for a long time. The man in black and Lawrence arrive in a nearby town. They sit down at a table in a Mexican cafe. Lawrence's daughter and his wife run to them. 
The man in black tries to get Lawrence to tell him where the entrance to the labyrinth is, but he refuses to answer. Then the man in black shoots the bartender, his brothers, and then Lawrence's wife. After that, Lawrence's daughter tells the man in black quite calmly that the labyrinth is not meant for him. He must go along the bed of the Red River, where the snakes nest. Lawrence asks to be left alone, but the man in black again ties the prisoner to his horse and rides out of town. The girl silently stares after them. Ford and the boy are walking in the desert. They see a rattlesnake, but Ford calms it with a single movement of his hand, and then shows the boy the black spire sticking out at the base of the cliff. He orders the child to leave and never come back here. The boy obediently walks away. In the lab, Elsie examines Maeve. She fixes up the android and returns her back to the park. Maeve is flirting with a guest in the saloon again. Elsie's corrections helped, and she's back in shape. Teddy and Maeve are having a conversation when one of the guests suddenly shoots the guy. Maeve doesn't like it. Later, when she returns home, she goes to bed. She has a dream in which she and her daughter are on a farm. Soon the nightmare of the Indian attack begins again. Mother and daughter run into the house. Maeve grabs her gun and prepares to shoot back, but behind the door that opens is not an Indian, but the man in black. Maeve tries to shoot him, but to no avail. After that, she wakes up on the lab table. Two technicians are performing an operation on her. Seeing Maeve come to her senses, the guys get scared and try to take control of the situation. Maeve grabs a scalpel and drives them away, then runs out into the hallway, holding her stomach. She ends up in the part of the complex where damaged hosts are repaired. Behind the glass, Maeve sees Teddy motionless. While she is looking at him, the technicians come up behind her and shut her down with a shot. They must conceal the fact of her disobedience. At night, Dolores wakes up in her bed. She comes out of the house, walks into the yard, kneels down and digs a gun out of the ground. There is a presentation at the center of the new story, called Odyssey on the Red River. When Sizemore finishes his story, there is applause, but Ford doesn't see the point and criticizes Sizemore. The boss says guests are not visiting the park for tasteless stories. They want a story in which they see themselves in a new role. Then we see William pick up a fallen jar and hands it to Dolores. The girl's face looks like she was hoping to see someone else. Ford and Bernard go to the park. The director shows Bernard the black spire and tells him that a new storyline will develop from here, which the management, and more importantly, the guests, are sure to enjoy. This concludes the second episode. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.